Hey folks, my name is Tim Webb, and if you're like me, you're ready for this whole tutorial series to start getting into the good stuff, and that's what we're gonna do. For the next many videos, we're gonna be getting into intermediate Python where we're getting into like the really good stuff. Like uh, we're gonna cover uh, asynchronous stuff, UI stuff, just a whole bunch of uh, networking stuff, like lots of really good stuff that you can use. And uh, we're gonna be doing that in, in this context. Uh, the, the project we're gonna be working on is uh, making our own Dropbox clone. It's gonna have a lot of advantages over Dropbox. Uh, the first being that we can pick individual files in whatever folder we want to sync across our devices instead of having everything stuffed into a Dropbox folder. Um, like we can, really, really nail it down to, we want this file to be syncing wherever the hell we want on other computers. You know, it's, it's gonna be great. It's really nice and um, highly customizable. Uh, and it, it's all gonna be local, so it's not gonna be on a cloud. So we're, we're gonna be moving fast and secure. Uh, so this first video is going to uh, cover some of the groundwork that we're gonna to need to do. We're gonna need a UI for this thing, and we're gonna to need to cover asynchronous stuff. So. Let's dive right into it. So there are a lot of different uh, Python frameworks that we can use for GUIs. And we're gonna be using the Pi Simple GUI uh, because it, it really is very simple, but it's also quite powerful. Like we're, we're gonna be able to customize this and do all kinds of great stuff with it. Uh, but it's, it's really, really easy to use. So we're importing that as SG. You can import all kinds of different things as whatever. Like some people like to import requests as R or whatever. Like it just means that we are bringing in this package and now we can use it by simply typing SG dot and then we're, we're in it. So what we want to do is uh, create a layout. And this is just going to be a list. And now try to picture this as I'm talking about it, right? We're going to have uh, one row. Um, so we'd make another list in here. And uh, that's gonna be uh, containing a text label that's gonna say password. So we wanna ask for the user's password. And then we're gonna have a thing in the same row. So we're in that same list. Now, uh, SG uh, input text. And here, since this is a password, we want it to um, have a, uh, a password character. Uh, and that's how we, we signify that this should be obscuring it if you if you just have an input text it's not going to obscure the, the text underneath it but if you get a password character and say in this case i'm using an asterisk uh that it's going to now be a password field like that um we also want to give this a key so we can uh retrieve the value of this we're just going to say password and now in the next row well we're going to uh put in something that we're going to use later um this is just going to be blank but we're also gonna do a key here, uh, calling it status, because we're gonna wanna append text to this, and uh, we're gonna be doing it by calling it by this key. So that's our status. Now we're gonna need uh, some buttons. So let's add a button that's submit, and another button that's cancel. All right, so we've got a list with three other lists inside of it. And each one of these lists is a row in our uh, program. So uh, we now can, we can actually see it right now by just doing a window equals um, g window. And we, we got to name the thing or else it's gonna just be like Python or something. Let's call this drip box. And we pass in our layout as something here in, add Dripbox to the project level dictionary so that it stops complaining about that. And now, uh, while true, we want to run this. So we just, uh, in, in this case, there are a lot of events and values, or event and value, that will be spit off from this window. So we want to be ready to catch those. And we will read from this window while true is true. Uh, this is a simple way to keep a constant loop. Um, and I'll just show you right now what we've got going on. Um, we can make that look a, uh, different. Like there's all kinds of different uh, uh, change look and feel. There's a whole bunch of different themes. Let's do amber dark and run that again. Oh, that didn't work. I. <laughs> 
Is it dark amber? Let's try that. There's a whole lot of different things. Oh, here, there we go. Um, so now we've got it. We've got our password. We got our password field and we got our submit button and our cancel button. But right now, none of this is doing anything. And in fact, closing this doesn't even close out of the program. Like it's still running. Uh, I have to manually do this. So let's make our UI do things. So uh, we might be curious about what kind of event we're hitting. So let's print out our event and we want to see what value is generated with that event. Let's uh, start with that for now. So now if I hit submit, we got a submit event. And remember we set the password key uh, for this text input. And that's what, what a random shit I put in here is our password. And now a cancel event is also giving us the password. It's not actually canceling anything. And this <laughs> killed the window. So now it's just giving a lot of none events. So let's handle for the cancel and the none. So if event is in, and I'm going to use a tuple here where I'm uh, going to say none and um, cancel. Uh, then we just want to break out of our loop here. So now, if I type in a whole bunch of stuff and submit, we that's still working as expected. If I cancel, it closes the program. Um, we'll assume that the same is true when I do that too. Okay, so yeah, that worked. Now, there's a small problem with all of this. <laughs> and that is, we're going to have a really complex program. And it, all this is work fine for simple programs, but when you have a complex program with stuff running in the background, that will lock up the uh, UI. I, I thought about showing this off in the, the video, but I don't want to show you the wrong way of doing things. So we're not going to do that. You're going to just, just have to take my word on this. It is really kind of a, a tricky situation you get into where the UI gets locked up and you're trying to do all this stuff in the background. Now, in a lot of uh, programming languages, including Python, you, you tend to do this by threading uh, things where you say CPU do this thread and do this thread and do this other thread. And that works. I mean, that's great, but it's a little complex and um, there, if you screw it up, it can screw up things really badly. You, you, there's a lot of ways it can screw up. So fortunately, Python's easy. We don't have to deal with that. Instead, we import async IO. And now we can start to work asynchronously in the same thread. Like this is, um, if you're not familiar with computers and, and how threading works, this might not make a lot of sense, but we're all we're doing all this on one processor and it's going to still happen doing all these different things at once without having to worry about threading. So let's uh, clean this up a little bit. We're going to um, call this our UI. That's now our UI function. And now we're going to have a background function. And just for the sake of having something happening in the background, let's just print out random ran int uh, to uh, 20,000 and I need to import the random package from uh, that's that's part of the uh, the built-in stuff in uh, Python so we got random we got async IO now we've got these two different processes and if we simply add async oh shit if we simply add async <laughs> to that this is now an asynchronous process. Now it, it won't run right off the bat asynchronously. Like if we uh, do now uh, background and UI like this, uh, this is just going to, no, oh yeah, it's, it's just gonna complain because I'm not doing it correctly. All right, let's do it correctly. Uh, let's make a new thing. We're, we're gonna call this our wait list. As you see, it's complaining about not giving the coroutine awaits. So let's make our waitlist by uh, calling async IO and wait. We can add a list of things. Oh, I gotta await this. We can add a list of things that we want to add in our waitlist. So in this case, we want to add background and we want to add UI. And now in our main clause, when we're saying if name equals dunder main, 
then we want to, to trigger our waitlist to happen. So what we want to do is grab the loop or the event loop, which is simply done by saying uh, async IO get event loop, where we're asking our program, okay, what is our event loop? And in this case, it's nothing yet. So it's just giving us this. And now we say loop uh, run until complete the thing that we wanted to happen, in this case, the waitlist, and uh, we'll close the loop uh, in case it does not uh, on its own. Now, this still won't be asynchronous, but it should start working. Yes, it is. It is working. But you see, the UI happened, but it's not doing our background task, or else we'd be seeing a whole bunch of uh, random numbers. In fact, if I hit this, yeah, okay, it's... It's not getting to that second process. Oh wait! As soon as I killed the um, the the window, we got that uh, happening. So like, it gave us a random number. Uh, let me make this a continuous thing here too. So now this should just always be spitting out um, random stuff at us. Now, in order to make these two processes that are working asynchronously now give each other space, we need to say, okay, at this point in my function, I'm gonna step back and you can come in with another coroutine. So we we do that by simply saying uh, async IO sleep and then giving it some amount of time where we say uh, for uh, a nanosecond or whatever this is, uh, we can await and you can go and do something else. Um, Let's do the same thing up here. Um, I'm going to oh, await async IO sleep. Uh, in this case, I'm actually going to say it can sleep for a full second. And now this should work. Ah, oh, god damn it. Oh, no, no. Okay. I know why I'm screwing up. Okay. So the UI is still working. It's, it's responsive and it did a thing and it came back and it's still responsive. And sometimes when I hit buttons and doing events, then it's giving us these random numbers. Um, but the reason that the background thing isn't continuously spitting out a number at us every second like we asked it to is this UI is now the one that's taking over. So we need to add a timeout to it. And this can be any number you want. Um, it, it's best to... I, I just uh, killed the UI, which is why it's now spitting out random numbers at us. So now... Um, in fact, let me change this to a sys exit. Uh, I gotta import sys. All right, so now we've added a timeout to our window where every second it's just gonna kind of send a timeout event. Uh, in fact, we'll see that now it's gonna be kind of obnoxious. Uh, <laughs> so let's, let's handle for that. Um, if event uh, is does not equal dunder timeout then we want to print it and now it's working we're we're given this timeout so it's it's like when i was hitting the button and something would happen this timeout event is telling our our uh, function here to go through its process here and it gets to the bottom it says sleep for a nanosecond and when it sleeps for a nanosecond the loop that we built is going back and saying well what else do I have to do oh yeah I've got this background process so I'm going to do this background process and that pops up this so as you see as I'm typing in things this is all like super responsive the UI is not being slowed down at all by this random thing that's going on in the background and we can submit we can get details from things and now canceling it will actually shut down the program. So I know I ran through this really fast because um, there's a lot of weird stuff in here that I wanted to get done, like just to, to have something physical to show you. So let me run back through it a little bit slower here. Uh, let's start with the, the, the GUI stuff. 
we imported it as SG, which is just a, a kind of convention that a lot of people do. So when you look this up online, if you ever got any questions about Python Pugui, you're going to see a lot of people doing this SG.txt and all this. Uh, so we've imported it as SG, so we don't have to type about Python Pugui all the time. And we made it uh, darker and a little less goofy. And we've we built this up in rows and we can also we can actually add another row here um this is kind of a, a neat trick uh so now there's going to be a, a empty space above our password and empty space below oh yeah that's right i didn't show you uh using the uh the key let me do that right now so cancel that close the program the program is no longer running uh so now let's uh Instead of printing this out, let's assign this to a value. So let's say uh, rando equals that. And now, if we, let's see if I remember how to do this correctly, um, window is defined up here. Okay, so we can just do window. Um, we can, I'm pretty sure we can call it by the key we set, which was status. And now we update that with our rando thing. Um, let's see if this works. So yeah, um, it's sort of working. Um, I actually did this in incorrectly intentionally. You see how it's only showing one of the numbers, even though it's a big number, it's only showing us the first one. We want to set a size for this. So we just do size equals. And uh, this is a tuple, I think, yeah. And uh, so we say uh, we want it to be 20 characters long and one character tall. And let's rerun that. And now a random number is updating the UI. And if you have ever worked with UIs and background processes and threading in any other programming language, you will be amazed at this right now. Like that was, it was that easy. Like I didn't even really remember it off the top of my head. I had to think about it for a few seconds, but that line right there is updating data from one place into another place that are both running synchronously, uh, like concurrently. Um, so like th in threading, this is a massive feat. Like <laughs> it's, it's a huge pain in the ass, but with Python and async IO, this is super simple. Like it, it's, as, I just wrote a line and it did it. Um, so uh, let me cover uh, a few, uh, the details here in the, the synchronous stuff to make sure we're, um, at least covering the important stuff. Uh, you notice that I had to async all of the functions and all of the functions have an await in them. Uh, in this case, they're just waiting for time to elapse. Um, but that's, that's basically all you do is like say, well, what is the thing you're waiting for? You await that. Um, it's, it's simple. Like it, it, uh, I don't want to make this seem like it's complicated in any way, but I also don't want to glaze over uh, some of the nomenclature here. Like it, it really is just these two words. Um, so yeah, you know, let's just leave it at that. It's these two words, async and await. And uh, you'll, if you put the wrong thing in the wrong place, you'll come into problems, but you'll usually like, there'll be something that screws up like this. Okay. Right now we've got uh, this thing locked up because it's awaiting and it's like, what the hell's going on? Uh, so that's, that's pretty obvious. Well, maybe I should take away that await. And now my program works again. <laughs> uh, so when you're first starting off with this, you might run into the problems like that. And it really is as simple as like, maybe await a little less. Like, <laughs> I think that's, that's probably step one in, in trying to troubleshoot it is await a little less. All right, I'm going to call it there. In the next video, we'll get into actually making something useful in our background process and handling our uh, password and all this. I don't want to throw too much into one video here. This is good practice. Like just doing this, I strongly recommend you practice doing this. Once you get this working like this, then you're going to be just like absolutely set on both the asynchronous and the UI fronts. Like from there, it gets much easier. Uh, thank you very much to my patron, uh, Benjamin Ford, and uh, I hope that more people will be <laughs> inclined to becoming my patron. Uh, take it easy, folks.